Hello and welcome and let's continue with linear algebra. Today in part 6 we will talk about the important concept of subspaces. However, before we start I want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. And please don't forget the PDF version and quizzes for the video you find in the description. Now, when you hear the general notion subspace in linear algebra, we always mean a so-called linear subspace. Moreover, you should always visualize lines or planes in the space, or if it's possible for you, even higher dimensional spaces. However, one important ingredient here is that they should stretch to infinity in all suitable directions. More precisely, we want to be able to do vector calculations on such a subspace. And indeed, this fact will give us the special properties we need. But maybe let's first start with something we already know. Namely, we have already considered subspaces in the vector space R2. Of course, we can easily visualize this vector space as a plane. And now you surely remember that in part 4 we have discussed lines in the plane. On the one hand we had lines that go through the origin and on the other hand we had lines that don't go through the origin. And here you can immediately remember that we need the origin such that the line is a linear subspace. Otherwise we would talk of an affine subspace. However, in order to understand them, you first have to understand linear subspaces. And indeed, such a line through the origin is a typical example for a subspace. Therefore, I think now we are ready for the definition. So here, the starting point should be our vector space Rn. And then, we just consider any subset of the set Rn and we call it U. However, we immediately can exclude the empty set because a subspace should never be empty. Ok, and then we explain in which cases we can call the set U a subspace. Again, here please note, only sometimes we put the attribute linear in front of subspace if it's not clear what we talk about. Ok, now the idea of a subspace is that we can calculate in U in the same way as we calculate in Rn. Therefore, please recall, in Rn we only have two operations. We can scale vectors and we can add them. This means now, when we do the same thing in U, we should get back a vector in U. And in fact, this is what we can describe with linear combinations. More precisely, this means if we form a linear combination with vectors in U, the resulting vector is still a vector in U. And of course, we can also put this into a formula. For this, please recall part 3 where we have defined a linear combination. So we just take k vectors u1, u2 and so on from the set u and also k scalars. And then we can form the linear combination, which means we scale the vector uj with lambda j and then we sum all up. And now, the important claim for a subspace is that this linear combination is also an element in U. In other words, we are not able to leave the set U by just scaling or adding vectors from the set U. And exactly this property makes a non-empty set to a subspace. So maybe visualize this subset here in the plane. Indeed, here you should immediately see when we take a vector u, like this one, then we could scale this vector and we see that we can leave the set u. Obviously, this point here is not an element in the set u. Hence, we can conclude that this set u is not a subspace. In this sense, you can immediately think of a positive example in the plane. Namely, a line through the origin does the work. You see this because now if we take a vector u in the space, then we could scale it as much as we want and we still land on the line. Moreover, you should also see that by adding vectors on the line, we still land on the line. In summary, this line through the origin is a subspace. So what you can see now is that a linear subspace 
is a vector space in the sense of the properties of the last video. More precisely, in the subspace U, all the calculation rules like in Rn are satisfied. This means if we have a set U that is a subspace, we don't need anything outside because we can do all the calculations in U itself. And this is exactly why the notion subspace is so important. Therefore, now in the next part, I want to show you how you can easily check if a set U is a subspace. This characterization is very helpful when you calculate with concrete examples. It tells us that any subset U in Rn is a subspace if and only if three conditions are satisfied. Of course, from before we already know the conditions, but it's helpful to write them down. Simply because now we have an order how to check for a subspace. Now, the first one is that the zero vector from Rn is in U. From the definition, this is not hard to see, because you can choose zero for all scalars, and then this linear combination would be the zero vector. So you see, this is an important property you can immediately check. In other words, if you see that zero is not an element of the subset, you can immediately conclude that U is not a subspace. Okay, then let's go to the next property, which we have also already discussed, meaning we can scale vectors. More precisely, if we take any vector lowercase u and any scalar lambda, then we can conclude that lambda times the vector u is also an element of u. Hence, we cannot leave the subspace by scaling. Moreover, then the next property, the third property, should explain that we cannot leave the subspace by adding vectors. Therefore, we take two vectors u and v from the set u. And then the conclusion should be that u plus v is also an element in u. Okay, so this is what you really should remember. This is how you can characterize a subspace. Indeed, the proof using the definition from above is not hard at all. Essentially, you just have to do a proof by induction. However, I don't want to show you this now, because I think we first should look at examples. And let's start with so-called trivial subspaces. Here I can tell you, mathematicians say trivial if things are immediately given and we don't have to think about them very long. So trivial does not mean that the things are easy or unimportant, it just means that they are already there. For example, we have the zero space, the space that only consists of the zero vector. And there you should see, we can immediately check all the three properties here. The first one is immediately given, the second one means we scale the zero vector, which results in a zero vector again. And the last one just says that we have zero vector plus zero vector. Hence, we can conclude this one is a subspace. Okay, then the other subspace, where we already know it's a subspace, is the whole space Rn. There, by definition, we already know that scaling and adding are well-defined operations. Therefore, all the three properties are immediately fulfilled. So what you can immediately remember here is that this one, the subspace with one element, is the smallest possible one. And the second one here, where all the vectors are included, is the largest possible one. This means that all other subspaces U have to lie in between. Hence, there we would have lines and planes as we have discussed it at the beginning. However, for a non-trivial example, in general, you have to check all the three properties here. And this is something I will show you in the next video. Therefore, I really hope that I see you there. Have a nice day and bye!